So with your 70 years experience of fishing, George, it's a great privilege for me to be sat next to you today uh, having this chat. But you did allude to some things that you would like to share with some of the problems that salmon face. So with your experience in mind, George, and your longevity in your career, and the time span you've spent on the river, I guess you're best placed than anyone to give your view on the decline of salmon through your period of employment and fishing career on this river. Well, going back to, suppose, uh, about to the early 70s, uh, the numbers coming into this river was astronomical. Uh, to go to, to give you an, an instance, say, 1969 I think it was, I had a copy of the, the catches that the nets in this river were, they were getting. And in 1969, they had 96,000 salmon and gulls up until the 15th of August when they took the nets off. Uh, and ever since that, they took the nets off, and lo and behold, it didn't make a blame bit of difference to start with because there were still fish coming back in. But as it began to, it began to dwindle, and it dwindled and dwindled and dwindled, it became quite serious. And uh, um, as a result of which uh, an awful lot of research was put into the river and, uh, and I felt at that time there should have been more practical practical work done on the river i.e. clearing burns and different things and assisting the district board in one thing and another but it dwindled and dwindled and I can always remember that in, in the 70s and the 80s in the springtime, January, February, probably March as well you could walk on any beat you wanted on the river and there were hundreds of Celts dead and dying at the river bank. Nowadays you could walk the whole river and you'll not see one. Mm -hmm. So something has happened to the numbers. Uh, I don't know what the real cause of it is. We can go in and uh, blame the district boards, we can blame the scientists and we can do everything else. But there must be something serious happening at sea. Time, George, there have been many changes uh, along the lines of tackle, approach, and equipment. What would be your view of these changes and how you've adapted to that or how you did adapt to that over your career? Uh, over the years, we've seen many changes uh, in the methods. Nowadays, there are more fly fishers on the river than anybody else. And that possibly, in some ways, could account for some of the decline, because you, over the year, especially from the springtime onwards, you would really need, with the cold water and the high water and the floods and all the rest of it, you need to have a spinning rod. Uh, nowadays, the fly fishing and the spinning fishing is uh, a bit simpler because the rods in the old days were heavy the lines were heavy flies were a lot of the time were different and it, there wasn't there wasn't there weren't enough people actually fishing spinning rods at that time uh, there were more there's more fishers i think on the river nowadays and less and less being caught uh, I'm not doing the, doing the fly any injustice when I say that, especially in the springtime, they do catch a few in the fly, quite a lot in the fly, but then there are far more fly fishers than ever. We never used to hardly see a, a, a fly rod on the river until about April and probably May, when it changed around completely. Uh, many people are still spinning. Uh, still catching fish, although it is nicer obviously to catch them on the fly, and not most people like catching them on the fly. Uh, but in general, I feel that we've got new method, new fly methods, new flies, different methods of casting. Well, way back in the olden days, they didn't do so much spear casting and all the different fancy casts that they've got nowadays, which are very very good. I think in general the, the, fly, the fly rods particularly 
and the lines are much better now, particularly in the wind. Uh, they are easier to fish, they're not so hard on you all day. We used to fish with the 16, 18 foot fly rods and they were heavy rods at that time. But uh, we've come a long way since then and the, a, a mixture of, I would always uh, have a mixture of fly fishing and spinning etc on the river. Especially on the River Tay being the size it is. The River Tay is too big to make it a fly only river. Um, and I've not been biased in that because I did prefer at the time uh, when I was catching most of my fish, I did prefer to fish uh, shrimps, prawns and the fly of course and, and any other fly uh, spinning method that you could think about. I started off with a prawn tackle when I started doing the prawns and the prawn tackle would be about that length, a few inches long. Yep. And I had a spinning mount on it. And you put, there was a pin went, that you put through the, right through the prawn, and you had to put something wire, to wire it on. Initially, we used to put it on with a rubber band, buy a packet of rubber, thin rubber bands, and we used to just put the rubber band on it. And, I, and you could put a, 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 a green rubber band on a red prawn and a red tackle, and it made no difference whatsoever. However, it was quite an expensive way of doing, as were the prawns at that time, but the amount of fish that you were catching it was well worth the while. I used to spend about uh, £20 for 200 prawns at that time, and they were frozen in a box when I kept them. And uh, somebody came away with this an idea that if you if you got a pin about that length and just a bit a worm hook and you straighten this thing out and you put it through without a spinning mount and I thought well it'll not be as good but lo and behold it was every bit as good and it saved you an awful lot of money by not having to buy these these prawn mounts. Uh, it, to be honest if you're a true fisherman all you really want is to feel that thing take. Once they've taken, I can give the rod to anybody. Once they, when they take, I was, that's what I liked when I was in the boat, if they wanted you to fish behind them. Unfortunately, I can't remember when, but they, they, they stopped the prawn and the shrimp. They got it banned because we were catching too many fish and with the numbers of fish that was, that was coming back into the river wasn't as big. Um, they stopped the shrimp and the prawn, I can't remember what year it was, but it's been quite a while now. Uh, the one thing that I didn't fish a lot, although I did fish it when I was younger up in the Spey, and the higher reaches of the Spey was the worm. And I have feelings about the worm because normally the, the worm goes down its throat quite a bit, and you have a job getting the hook out, and they say that you can cut the cut the hook out, just cut the line and leave the hook in its mouth, which I suppose the scientists are saying that it, it rots and the hook falls away. I don't know if that's true or not because I've never done it. Uh, the other thing I, didn't, I don't particularly like, and it's very effective, is the flying condom. Because I feel that the flying condom, an awful lot of the fish with the flying condom, take the, take it the, right down the throat and as a result of that you can't put them back, you can't release them. As well as being a, an authority and dab hand at prawn fishing, George, I know personally that you were also very good with your fly rod, uh, and in particular your choice of flies. Would you like to share with uh, us your uh, most deadly patterns? If you go back to the 70s and the 80s, and I fished the fly quite a lot, as well. Uh, my favourite at that time was the Monroe Killer. Nowadays you see very little of the Monroe Killer. Your Monroe Killer, your Orange Alley Shrimp, your Cascade, your uh, Soat's Tail and your Silver Soat's Tail which is black with a silver body. Uh, they were the main ones 
in, in the time that I was fishing. Nowadays, there are absolutely hundreds and hundreds of salmon and variations, salmon flies and variations of salmon flies. And I often wonder if uh, they're really necessary, you know, if you still fish the same way as we did before when you're with that flies that I've mentioned. You would, I still think you would catch probably as many. But nowadays they're fishing different flies. Uh, I know of one gilly who swears by the fly that he ties and he says that the, the fly will come up, that come round, the salmon will come up and look at it. And if that little bit of uh, tinsel or whatever you want to call it is not on the fly, it turns and goes away. And I remember a ghillie saying that to me, and I said to him, I said, don't believe what that ghillie's telling you. Because you're not going to tell me a salmon comes up like that and goes to take it. And then says, oh, it hasn't got that little bit of the tip of whatever you want in it. So that's, nowadays I think there are too many flies. And you can, a, 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 an amateur fly fisher or a learner is bamboozled with the amount of flies. In actual fact, all the flies that are made nowadays, they're all much and such colours of the old. And nowadays they're getting them in size 10s and size 12s and maybe 14s, which is very, very small. When I was fishing, I fished a 6 double, never anything else, it was always a 6 double. And I got just as many. And I think nowadays I was still you wouldn't get as many because as many they're, they're not there but you would still catch quite a lot in these four or five flies that I mentioned. It's obvious to me that salmon fishing is a sport of inclusion. What would be your thoughts on that? Well in my opinion salmon fishing is for everybody as is other methods of fishing but we're talking about the river Tay today and salmon fishing uh, Unfortunately, the government do not think that salmon fishing is for everybody. They think it's only for the for the those and such as those who have plenty of money, which to a certain extent, because of the prices that they're paying nowadays, is possibly slightly true. But it, it's not true overall, because everybody but everybody loves fishing. Yes, it gets you away from everything. You can go out there and your every cast that you have, it's your bait's coming around and you're saying to yourself, here we go, it'll come this time, it'll come this time, it'll come this time. It gets everybody out in the open air, away from drugs, away from everything else. And to me, it, it is a fantastic way of doing it. I've been the luckiest man alive. 